and welcome to this video. And although this is a rig video and a rig making video, um, this is going to be a little bit different because this rig will need a little bit of explanation as it is not a rig that you're going to be used to seeing or using, especially around the UK coast. Some people that may travel abroad may use this rig for bigger fish. Um, it's ideal for targeting rays, sharks. So in the UK it would work for for any largemouth species of fish that take bigger bait. So you'll be fine using this rig for bass, for cod, it'd be fine for rays, for smooth hounds, for taupe, uh, for spur dogs, for any large fish that you may get off the shore that would swallow a big bait, this rig will work very well. So the rig is called the dongle rig. And I've got a couple of examples. So I'll just show you this one here. And it clips up, streamline. And the beauty of this rig is it allows you to present a large bait with basically the whole hook free. The whole hook point is free. You don't have to bury the hook deep inside a bait. Um, the bait is well attached to the rig and it also allows you to fish this rig with a weak link to your lead so if you are fishing big baits for big fish and it's snaggy or you just want to get rid of the lead that can happen on this rig because the lead link can be as weak to an extent as you want it you could go 20 pound because all the casting all the casting pressure from this rig is actually on the hook snood. So I will show you now how this rig sets up and how it looks. So this is the top end of the rig where it would attach to your main line. So as you can see there I've got a power swivel and one, one eye of that power swivel is free that's where it would clip to your main line and then I've got two things attached to the bottom eye of that swivel, one being the hook snood which is the titanium wire section with the shrink, the heat shrink on it and the second part of it is 25 pound mono there which is the lead line, the lead link. So as we run down this rig, two lines run together there you can see the titanium and that's where the titanium comes down to the hook. So you, this predominantly we use these with circle hooks. So that's a Black Magic KL50. And the bait gets attached to basically that hair rig section. So that is a section of wire. Um, and that is approximately five inches long. It's got a loop at one end there, and it has also got a loop underneath that silicon there. And that is where your bait will be attached. You attach the bait down to that loop, which I will show you later on in this video, and you attach it just up to the side of this silicon section. Now, I'll show you how this works in a minute when we're baiting up. What you've got then, as the mono goes down, you have bent rig clip, which is important. That's how you uh, clip the bait, clip the uh, lead up, and this is how it clips up. So, basically, your lead, your gripper, or whatever you've got, free rolling lead, clips on to the bottom loop there of your bait dongle and that whole section there that bait dongle and then your your hook snood hook length takes the entire weight of the cast so you can have that lead link as light as you want to an extent if you wanted to to if you definitely wanted it to snap off when a fish takes you could probably go down to 15 pound um, a big shark takes this gets hooked on, on the circle hook and then hopefully your lead will come off 
and you'll be playing the fish directly to your main line. Now here are a few pictures of fish that we've had on this dongle rig. Um, it works for sharks as you can see. It works for bass in the Canaries, as you can see. Uh, again, rays. It works for big stingrays. Any fish that will come along, swallow that bait. And as it's on a circle hook, you don't need to strike. Just let the fish run with it. Point the rod tip at the line as it's coming out. And then just tighten down on it. And the hook with that circle curve on it just pulls into the corner of the mouth and 90, 99% of your hookups tend to be right in the corner of the mouth. So, what I'm going to do, let me just show you another one very quickly. Now here is another one here. That's on a bigger circle hook. Uh, uh, that's on a demon circle, I think. Heavy. That's got, again, about a five inch dongle on the end. And with all these circle hooks, you don't want to attach a knot directly to the eye of the hook. So we attach the hook to a loop. So this is the perfection loop. I'll just put the uh, link up the top there for the perfection loop. This allows freedom of movement with that, with that hook. You can freely move around that loop so that when you tighten down, on the drag when a fish is running that hook can just swing around very easily into the corner of a into the corner of the mouth uh, this one's on 100 pound fluoro and that would have been one that I've you used for targeting bluefish in the canaries because they don't tend to take with wire but you need some thick fluorocarbon because they have got some nasty gnashes on them so anyway there's a few of the dongle rigs and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a dongle rig I'll show you how to make one with fluoro and I'll show you how to make one with titanium and the knots that you need to use with the titanium and then I'll show you how to bait it up and how to put the bait on the hook to give a good presentation for any fish that wants to come along so let's get on with the making first and the first one I'm going to show you how to make is a titanium dongle rig. So to make this rig out of titanium this is what you're going to need component wise. I have got a KL, a Blackmagic KL80 there. I've then got a 1.0 power swivel, four crimps, single crimps got a, a bent uh, rig clip there, two sections of shrink wrap, heat shrink sorry, that's um, about two inches long, and then a section of three mil um, tubing. Then going to need uh, some crimping pliers there, you're going to need some small crimping pliers, uh, something that does below 0.5 so something that does 0.3 these quarter ones just do um, large and small so that works for this I think I've got some pliers just to pull to pull the wire tight and then I've got these cheap cutters and they're dog nail cutters they were from a bargain store and they cut anything which is great I don't think the blade will last that long but uh, for now they work and then for the hook snood Titanium wire. Titanium wire is so much better than other stranded wire. This is single strand titanium wire. It doesn't kink. It's very difficult to kink. I mean, extremely difficult. It's just got. It just stays straight. It's got a slight bit of elasticity to it, so it stretches a bit, and it's just all round a better wire to use. So I'm going to use that for the hook snoods. And then for the dongle section, I don't want to use titanium, I don't want to waste that, it's expensive titanium wire, so I'm going to use this 49 strand mustard um, wire, so that's uh, going to be used for the dongle section, it's still wire, um, it moves around 
fully enough and it doesn't matter if the dongle kinks a little bit that's where the bait's going to be presented on so that's what you need so let's get round to building this rig so the first thing you want to do is cut a length of titanium to the length that you want your hook snood but maybe just give it another five six inches so you can tie the hooks at either end now this titanium is very expensive so try not to waste it um, it will last a lot longer than stranded wire so I've cut off about two and a half foot length and that will allow me to make about a two foot hook snood with this titanium so once you've cut your length which you've got here take your hook thread the end of the titanium through the eye of the hook and then what you want to do is loop that back round like so go back through the eye creating a loop so this is what you should have small loop there and when you've got that small loop you want to get that loop down to well that's as small as you can work with it is all trial and error with this and you want to leave there about three inches tag on that end now what you want to do is holding that loop you want to pass the line through the loop once twice three four times like so what you'll be left with there you'll be left with your hook there the double loop and the tag wrapped through that loop four times and then you'll have your main hook snood titanium going away and you'll have this much tag left to play with so that's not the not finished what we want to do we want to slide down we want to let go of that that's not going anywhere we want to slide down two single crimps all the way down to the bottom and then what we do there's your two two crimps we slide both crimps over the tag end and we push them right down to the loop we then hold the bottom crimp in place and we can move the second one away from the, the one nearest the hook by about two mil and what we can do is then with the larger section of these cord pliers I can crimp that in place with about two mil gap between that and the first one there we are just make sure I don't know if you can see that when you crimp you want to make sure you've got the you don't crimp the whole crimp flat you want to have the little bit of flare at each end and what that does it, it allows the the wire to to regain its its full shape thus making it more difficult for the for the full shape of wire to be pulled through the crimp section then what we want to do with this tag we've got here I'm going to fold this tag right over that crimp I'm going to push the end down back through that first one that we haven't crimped yet and we can then butt that back up which I'll show you in a second that's what we've got there
you've crimped the furthest crimp away from the hook and then you've looped the line back over and we're now going to crimp you've tucked it into the first crimp so that's got three pieces of titanium run, running through it. It's got the main hook snood running through it. It's then got the tag that runs away from the hook through it, and then the tag comes back out of the second crimp through to the first crimp. So that's got three sections of titanium wire in it. And what we're going to do is keep that tight there. We're going to crimp that into place nice and tightly. Like so. And there we go. So just to tighten, just to tidy that up, sorry, we're going to put, well, firstly, what I'm going to do with the pliers, with the small pliers there, I'm just going to flatten that, that fold over, like so. I've got a nice loop there for freedom of movement that circle hook and then with one of your sections of heat shrink you can push that right down and over the uh, shrink tube sorry right down and over your crimps now we we'll just apply a bit of heat to that and it'll be done Right, there we are. Happy with that. That now is done at that end, and that's not going anywhere. So now we need to do the second side of this hook snood, which is where we use a power swivel there. But what we need to do with that power swivel before we put that on, we need to put your second section of heat shrink on the line. You then need to put your two crimps on first, like so, and then we can do the same knot again with this. So we go through the eye of the swivel, we loop it right round, and go through the eye again, like so, leave about three inches or so tag. We then go through the eye once twice, three, four, like so. Then got that loop there, you got the tang in there. We bring both swivel, uh, both crimps back down, both crimps there. We slide both crimps over that tag. Like so, by the way, back down to that loop. Give a couple of mil. Crimp the furthest one away from the swivel. Like so. And we bend that tag over. Push it back down through the First crimp, and this one I've left a little bit longer tag, which is okay. I'm going to flatten that down, push that through a bit more. Use the pliers to help me. Like so. I'm then going to crimp that one again. Or that one, should I say, for the first time. Nice and crimped. Like so. There's a little tag there, so I'm just going to bend this out of the way, cut that tag off, like so. The last with this, pull the shrink shoe down, apply a bit of heat to that. And 
neaten this up. And there we have it. There you have your main hooks snood, titanium hook snood done. So you've got your swivel at that end on the titanium wire. You've got it at that end now. So the second thing to do is cut a length of Uh, the 49 strand wire, just going to use them for that. Two more single crimps. And we can uh, just crimp the loop on both ends of this. Nice and tight. Again, another crimp, push that down there, like so, crimp another loop. And there like so, nice and tight. Voila. The last thing to do with your section of silicon is to slide that silicon over the loop like so. There we go, you can see the loops in that silicon. And then to hook that on, you want to hook through the, the tubing and make sure you go through the loop and it's the tubing that keeps it on the loop. So we're going to hook that through. Sort of a few mil down from the top. Now the other side. And then pull that down over the barb. And there you have it. That is sitting on there nicely. Now, all you need to do next is to get a line of choice. I'm going to go with this trialing fluorocarbon. 50 pound. I'm using this for this because I don't particularly like it that much. It's not strength, it's not very good at all. Um, and I've had quite a bit of experience with this snapping on me with big fish at least three or four times at the knot. So um, I'm going to use this for the lead line on this because. Um, I need to use it up. So, very simple. Take a bit of your line. Tie it to the same eye of the swivel at the top where your titanium wire is. We do a uh, uni knot on that. If we can get a four turn, that'd be good. Should be alright. One, two, three, four. Pull that down tight, nice and tight. Put your tag in, make sure that's a good knot. What we can do, we can snip that off. As this is, leave a little tag there. And we just blob the end, we just blob the end of that, just to neaten this up. Just gently offer the end of that tag to the heat. You'll end up with a nice mushroom shape on the end. Just neatens it up. And then what you want to do is measure that out. So it's longer than the loop at the bottom of your dongle. And then you can go as far as you want, really. Um, but obviously the further you go, the more your bait is going to start sitting up off the bottom. So if you want your bait sitting on the bottom, off the bottom, that's fine. If you want your bait to be moving around on the bottom a bit, I would only go just past the uh, past the length of the loop by about six, seven inches. Cut that off. And then we tie your 
lead clip with a bike clip on it. On again at the bottom end with a uni knot. Four turns. Just moisten it. Pull it down. Cut that off there. And again, we can just offer that up to the heat. Blob the end off. Lovely, and there we have it. To move everything out of the way. We have your titanium dongle rig. Comes down there like so. Comes to that there. There's your dongle. Like that. And then just past that is your lid link. And then that will clip in there. When you're casting and the whole hook snoot takes the weight of the cast. Right, now we've done that, let me show you to do it with the fluorocarbon one because the knots for tying it on are a little bit different. Right, so now I'm going to do one with fluorocarbon and I'm going to do this one more aimed at bass and maybe small rays and things like that. So for this one, what you're going to need is you're going to need the same cutting tools, maybe some pliers, but I've gone with a Black Magic KL50 this time, which is a bit smaller. I've got, again, I've got the, uh, the bent big clip. I've then got two double crimps there. 0, 0 0.9 mil double crimps and as always I've got the 3 mil tubing and then for the hook snood I'm using Synetic Mimetic and this is brilliant fluorocarbon this is available through Gone Fishing with the Bearded Armenian up there that's Aram's page he has this in all different braking strains. It is an amazing fluorocarbon. So I've got 60 pound here. Um, it's got no memory. It's nice and um, well, it's just really nice to use, really nice to tie with, really abrasion resistant and virtually invisible in the water. So that's going to be used for the hook snood. And then for the dongle at the bottom, I'm going to use 80 pound suffix, that's where the bait's going to get attached to, and that's 0, 0 0.80 mil, and that's what I'm using the double crimps, the 0 0.9 double crimps for, to crimp the two loops at the end. So, again with this, in fluoro as with in, in uh, titanium or in wire, We've got to have the loop where we need to have the loop where it joins the eye of the hook, especially when using circle hooks. It just gives freedom of movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my length of fluorocarbon that I want. So about two and a half foot. I'm going to cut. And then what I need to do is I need to tie the perfection loop. So I did put that link earlier. The perfection loop. The thing you need to do, you need to get a loop of line in your hand. You take the line around the back, like so. But you need to leave that loop big enough to pass a hook through for now. So that's probably about 20 mil. Then I'm going to create another loop bringing it round, but as I create it, I'm going to slide the hook on. So I've got a loop going around the back, I'm creating a second loop going around the back again, with this second loop of line, but I've got the hook on that, so I don't know if you can see that. Two loops, second loop, and then as that tag line comes round, for the second time I go between those two loops with the tag, there's the tag, 
go between the two loops and hold it down tight and then I pass the hook and the second loop through the first one and we gently tighten that down and as we tighten we can manipulate this because that is too big a loop there so what we do is we can push this loop down push it down and then pull the tag until that gets smaller and smaller and you can end up with a nice loop like so which is not that big at all but still gives the hook a lot of freedom of movement so pull that down tight like so cut that tag end off leave a tiny little bit and when you're fishing with rigs for big fish I always suggest finishing it off by blobbing the fluoro, the mono it just stops any chance of that slipping because that little mushroom might be able to slip through the slip through the knot so then we do the same the other side oh, one thing I did I did forget to point out one thing that you do need and that's a swivel that's very silly of me isn't it so you're going to need a swivel at the top end now you can tie this or do the perfection loop I'm going to just tie this I'm going to use a uni knot very simple four turns moisten that pull that down nice and tight like so and then cut that off block the end like so simple very simple there is your hook length done already then we want to do the dongle where your bait's going to sit so we take some of this suffix let's just cut a section 10 inches long Thread a double crimp on one end, pass it back through, leave a little tag because we can blob that off. Let's make a loop, I don't know, 10 mil loop. Then we can crimp that, like so. And what we can do is cut that off there. Again, blob that. That stops that sliding through that crimp, and then we can work out the length which we want this dongle to be. So I'm going to take a bit off there. I'll thread this on first. And thread that through, double crimp again. I'm thinking like four inches is fine. So again, you can crimp that. Not a problem. That's crimped. Cut off the excess. Like so. And then blob that. I'm not putting the mono into the flame. I'm just offering it up to the edge of the flame. Probably about 10 mil away and it just starts to blob. There we go. Like with that. Like with the other one. We can just thread this bit of silicon over there over the, the loop as long as that silicon's in the loop we can then pass the hook through the silicon make sure you go through the loop there we have it that dongle cannot come off there last thing to do is again with this I'll take the 
50 pound trolling. Tie it with a uni knot. Onto that same eye of the swivel at the top. Do a full, full turn. Pull that down tight. So, blob that, lovely, and then we bring them, the lines both down together till we go past the loop, give it a bit more, I'm going to give this one like another foot, cut that, and then we tie memory clip up and there we are uni knot again nice and tight trim off the tag block the end and there we go so there's two examples of the dongle rig this one again would clip onto the, the loop underneath the hook that's where your that's where your lead will go the lead line is slack and it's cast on the strength of the hook snood now you can always have different length dongles built up you can have dongles built out of different materials and then to take these off you rough it around you just have to manipulate it over the barb which there we are and that comes off. You could then put a longer one on, you could put a thicker one on if you've lost something. Um, it's good to have a selection of these in wire. Um, Aram uses 200 pound braid because he gets a lot more movement on it. So you can build them out of anything. Selection of these are good and they can be interchanged with your jungle rig. Now next thing I'm going to show you is how to bait up one of these dongles properly to use with this rig. Right, so now you've made the rigs, you want to be able to bait this up to present it for a fish. So the first thing to do is when you're baiting this up, take the dongle off. Now you take the dongle off by just squeezing the uh, silicon, manipulate it over the barb, and the bigger the bar, the bigger the hook, the trickier this is, and you do sometimes have to rip it a little bit, but with the smaller hooks, it's not an issue at all. And you've got to also manipulate the the eye that you've put in the wire over the barb. So with an 8-0, it does get tricky. But once you've gone through it a few times, it's not too bad. So there we are. That's coming off. There. Just don't want to get my finger caught on the barb. That's off, done, like so. Right, then we want to measure the length of the dongle to the bait that you've got. So I've got a bit of mackerel here, mackerel fillet, quite a common bait. I want the mackerel to end if we start the top of the dongle level with the mackerel. I then want the mackerel to end before the bottom loop. That bottom loop has got to be free and open. So I'm going to go in there like that, underneath there. Cut that like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bait elastic this up now. I'm going to try and keep this loop at the bottom free. But then I'm also going to try, I want the bait level with this loop at the top, but I want this loop free of the sausage. So. Let's start baiting bait elastic in this up. And we can do the bottom section here, like so, like you would. You can pull that loop just out there, like so. And we can work our way up this bait. Got a nice sausage on there. 
and as we work our way up, we get closer and closer to that section of silicon there. What we can do is leave that on one side like so. We can just bait elastic across there like that. A nice big sausage there. Mackerel. And what you'll see, see the loop there, free at the bottom. And you'll see that silicon section free at the top. And all we do is take the hook, we go through the silicon, through the eye that's underneath the, the little loop of wire, and then through the bait, like so. So there you have your bait is hooked, and it's also on the dongle, like so. So that is elasticated onto that dongle. The loop is free at the bottom, so that when you put your lead weight on there, let's clip that lead weight on, which is over here. Obviously you wouldn't be using a 130 with this because it's quite a big bait. That would then clip onto there, like so. It's got that big dongle with a whole loop of the hook showing for something to come along and engulf it. And then you would cast that out. And as it hits the water, just give yourself a little bit of slack. It allows that to come out of the loop. And then you have that big bait sitting on the bottom or near the bottom, floating around like that. Anything comes along and engulfs that and runs, they're getting hooked on your circle hook. Now you can do these with peeler crab, with a bunch of group of worms, um, any fish bait, squid, the lot. Big chunks of tuna, it allows you to present a big bait on a big hook that's going to hook a decent fish. And if you're using titanium, you're not going to get kinks. You can use it over and over again. And it's an ideal big fish bait, uh, big fish rig. And it's an ideal big fish rig. Now, a little tip with your dongles, you don't just have to have them sitting um, down on the bottom of the seabed. You can add some buoyancy to it. So here I've got a bit of flip-flop sole, high-density foam. You can use polystyrene. And this I've just put a slice halfway through it. There, my thumb's going in. And I can just then push the main section of the dongle in, keeping the loop at the end free, as you can see. And then I can wrap a bait around that, hook it on, and that would add a lot of buoyancy to the bait. So if I had that mackerel fillet wrapped around there, that would be buoyant. And instead of it being on the bottom, it could be freely moving, bouncing up and down adding a lot more movement to the bait. So there's other options with this dongle. It doesn't just have to be fished flat on the bottom. So I hope this has helped. I hope you've seen how this works. Please message me if you want any more help on this rig. And please send me any photos if you catch any fish on this rig. I'd like to see them, but here's a few more fish myself and Aaron over the years have had using this rig. It proves that it works. Till next time, tight lines. Mm -hmm.